Hey, Mike Mata here. We're going to talk about the IP header. Moving on up from the data link layer. We talked in a previous session about frames, and now we're going to spend some time talking about packets or the network layer. So to put it into perspective, the frame or the data link header we've spoken about before has minimum 14 bytes, 6 bytes destination address, 6 bytes source address, and 2 bytes ether type or length. And then if it has length, then it's one of the other frame formats. So we're going to talk about the IP header. And again, typically what you'll find in your environment, the minimum IP protocol header is 20 bytes, but it's variable length and can be up to 60 bytes in IP version 4. IP version 6, it's fixed 40 bytes, and that's a later discussion. Today we're going to focus on IP version 4. So, again, if you think about the whole addressing structure up and down the, the protocol stack, physical layer we've discussed, we're moving bits across the wire from my NIC to your NIC, again in frames and those frames can be one of a couple three different frame formats today version 2 uh, 802.3 with a SAP or 802.3 SNAP sub network access protocol so they have LLC information or LLC headers associated with those other frame formats again typically IP it's a version 2 frame format that you're going to see. And that ether type of 0800 and hex defines the next upper layer protocol as IP version 4. That IP address and your TCP port, and we're going to talk about that in a future, defines the socket or what I like to think of as the circuit that the conversation pair is going to use to move whatever the application data is across this virtual circuit or virtual socket network socket. So the IP header is minimum 20 bytes and we you know we said maximum can be up to 60 and how do we know? So here's if we break this all out bits have significance when we start talking about IP headers and the first four bits is the version so if the four bit is on obviously that tells us it's IP version 4 if the four and the two bit are on it tells us it's IP version 6 the next or least significant nibble if you will here so the least significant nibble the IP header length the IHL that tells us how big the IP header length is in 32 bit words. So think about 4 bytes, right? 32 bits is 4 bytes. So whatever that number is, and, and again, typically that's going to be 5, so 5 times 4, 20 byte IP header. The next field is the type of service, better known as the quality of service, or it can actually be decoded in two different ways. Type of service is the original and then the, the newer is differentiated services code point but it uses the same byte in the IP header. The next two bytes is the total length of the IP datagram uh, so not including the data link layer. The next two bytes is the identification, and that's used for a couple things. It's number one, gives us a way to fingerprint or find this particular IP datagram anywhere in our network. It's also used if we're going to uh, fragment this particular IP datagram into multiple smaller pieces because a router may have to fragment uh, to move you know this big frame into smaller fragments based on an MTU maximum transmission unit size and if we're gonna have to fragment then all of the fragments will use the same ID and we'll talk about that coming up flags there are three flags bits that sort of define whether or not we may fragment don't fragment if it is the last fragment or if there are more fragments to follow TTL, time to live, that, that field gets decremented as the frame goes through a router, or technically in this case the packet goes through a router. The router then decrements TTL as it puts it out on the outbound interface. 
The protocol field tells us what's the next upper layer protocol that this IP datagram is transporting. And again, the two most common today are TCP and UDP. TCP having a hex value of 0, 06 and UDP having a hex value of 11. Header checksum, so we're validating the IP header, sort of like CRC for the uh, frame. This is the CRC, but strictly for the IP header, because this has to get recalculated at every router hop as the, as the router is decrementing TTL or changing a value in the IP header, then it must recalculate the header checksum at every router hop. And then who is this particular packet coming from? The source IP address. And you notice that's a 32-bit field, or think about, you know, four bytes dotted decimal notation. And destination IP address, again, four bytes, you know, whatever, 192.168.15.20. So there's, you know, four octets or four bytes worth of information, 32 bits. That ends your standard normal 20-byte header. Now, again, we can have options and padding included, and padding would it has to end to have to pad out the options to a 32-bit boundary. So that's the basics of IP. When we think about what does IP really do, a couple of three things. I take my IP address, your IP address, through my mask. It's up to me to figure out are you on the same or different subnet. If I figure out you're on the same subnet as myself, I will ARP you get your MAC address, put it in my ARP cache, and build my frame directly to your MAC address. If I figure out you're on a different subnet, then I will send the frame to the router's MAC address that I've ARPed on my local subnet, so who's my default gateway. I will send the frame to the MAC address of my default gateway and let the router figure out how to get to you. IP does not provide flow control or error control, any of that but it can provide quality of service using the type of service byte. And we'll, we'll discuss that in more detail. And third and final thing IP does for us typically is fragmentation and reassembly so that we can move larger amounts of data or bigger frames across you know, networks that have smaller MTUs. For instance, in the olden days when we used X25, X25 for our WAN link had a maximum transmission unit size of 256. So obviously, if we're moving 1,518 bytes and we send, try to send that across an X25 network, it's not going to fit. So it would have to be chopped up into smaller fragments that we could move across that network. And we still see it happen today. So again, the functionality is I take my IP, your IP, if you're the server, through my mask, and I figure out, are you on the same or different? You're Google. So if I take Google's IP or any other you know, web address that's not my local, I would figure out you're on a different subnet. I would then have to send my frame to the MAC address of my default gateway and let the router figure out how to route frames to the end station's IP address. And as that frame traverses routers or packet traverses routers, the router is responsible for decrementing the time to live, recalculating the uh, IP header checksum. So that's the basics of the information in the IP header and we've talked about you know fragmentation again if I'm gonna chop a frame up if the router is gonna chop it up it's going to chop it up all of those fragments will have the same IP ID so that when it gets to the final end station and it is ready to reassemble the message it knows it has all of the pieces and it knows that based on the fragment offset field inside of the IP header and again we'll discuss that in more detail coming up and fragments don't have to arrive in order they can arrive out of order it's the offset field that tells us which order to to put them into but they must arrive typically within 60 seconds or the end station will throw them away if it does throw them away and we're sending you know based on TCP is the transport then TCP will have to retransmit uh, if it's UDP, 
it's getting chopped up, then obviously it's connectionless. It just discards it. There is no ACK or anything that's returned. So those those fragment offsets are just basically or fragments are gone forever. So let's take a look at this in our protocol analyzer. Here we see 192, 168, 1.150, wanting to talk to 65.254.231.110. Well, there's no way that 192 and 65 are on the same subnet. Therefore, the frame has to go to the MAC address of the router. So if we were to look at MAC addresses, you see the source MAC address is the 0023 ends in 2D8A, and we're sending to the destination address that ends in 7A49, or it's a two-wire you know, modem, uh, DSL modem. So if we look at... There's the MAC address of 7AB9, or sorry, 7A49, 192.168.1.254. That is the IP address of the router, and that is the MAC address. So my machine has stored that MAC address in its ARP cache. And so anytime I want to talk off of my local subnet, I will send frames to that particular MAC address. And that's exactly what we see happen in this particular frame where we're starting a connection to a IP address that is off of our local subnet. We're sending the frame from the source MAC address to the destination MAC address of the router. And we talked about inside of the IP header there is information that's useful. We said the, the first four bits defines the IP version. In this case, it tells us, you know, the four bit is on there. If we think one, two, four, eight, so that's the four bit that is on, tells us IP version four. And then the IP header length is a five. If Again, if we think in binary, one, two, four, 8, so 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 32-bit words, 32 bits, 4 bytes, 5 times 4, 20-byte IP header. We talked about the type of service can be used for quality of service, and in this case, we're looking at it as DSCP, Differentiated Services Code Point, and basically there is no quality of service, or it's zero, so no precedence or differentiated services or priority. Our total IP length, 48 bytes, and the unique IP ID, again, so that we can find this frame anywhere, this packet, anywhere in our network. There it is in hex, and then in brackets there, the analyzer is converting that hex into decimal. And we talked about the fragments that we can actually, you know, if this has to be fragmented, then it will chop it up into smaller pieces. We can see here um, the fragment basically is do not fragment, so the do not fragment is set to true. So if this were to go to a router that had to chop up this particular frame, the router would discard this packet and send me back a um, ICMP message saying that it did discard the packet. Time to live, again, we can see that is set to 128, so as this goes through a router, the router will decrement that to 127 and then recalculate the checksum. Protocol, again, in this case, IP is transporting TCP, next upper layer protocol. And again, who it's coming from, source address, who it's going to, destination address. Now, what we don't see is the subnet mask. The only time the subnet mask gets sent across the network is in DHCP and or routing protocols. But from the client's perspective, the only time we see the mask is in the DHCP startup process. So once we have that information, it's up to my client PC to figure out 192 binarily through the mask of 255 something and 65 binarily through the mask of 255 something. There's no way that those two numbers can be on the same
local subnet, so therefore why the frame had to go through the router. If we look at this in Wireshark, it's pretty much the same. Uh, very similar in the way that Wireshark decodes. We can see the source MAC address sending to the two wire destination address. So we're talking off of our local subnet from IP address of 192.168.1.150. Um, we can see the IP version for the header length is 20 bytes. Now you notice Wireshark doesn't really give you the binary equivalent of each of those fields so it's just decoding the hex information for you. The differentiated services, now here it does give us the, the bits if we open that up. We can see the DSCP, six bits there of zero basically and then the explicit congestion notification, two bits not set. The length 48. The unique IP ID, again, like Observer, they both give it to us in both hex and decimal. And then the flags for the fragmentation, we give you the binary because, again, bits have significance now when we get into the IP header. And in this case, the don't fragment bit is set. So therefore, if the don't fragment bit is set, uh, again, if the router has to chop this particular frame up because of the MTU size, it would then discard this frame and send back a ICMP message. Time to live. Again, we see 128. As this packet goes through a router, the router would decrement that to 127 if we were to capture on the other side of the router. Next upper layer protocol, again in this case TCP. Um, 6 tells us TCP and then our source and destination information. So there's a good start on understanding what is in your IP header. Our next series we're going to talk about how to use the ID and flags and fragmentation and actually do some troubleshooting with that. So thanks for listening. I hope that was informational for you.